The most important thing in sea level research really isn't the mathematics, it's the physical insight. The math sort of ties a ribbon around it. But before you do the math, you have to have a sense and intuition for what physics is in play here. My name is Jerry Mitrovica and I'm a scientist. I study the way the Earth's crust, its gravity field, its rotation changes over time. And I'm particularly interested in the implications of that for long-term climate, both for modern climate that we're experiencing today, but also ancient climate as recorded in the geological record. The data that I use depends on the problem that I'm looking at. If I'm interested in modern sea level, I would look at uh, tide gauge data. We also use a lot of satellite data to constrain sea level. But if I'm looking at more ancient sea level events, then of course my observations all come from the geological record. The overarching idea, the whole thesis of my career in a way, has been that all of those data sets, whether they're satellites or they're corals or they're old shorelines, what they show is that sea level does not go up uniformly around the globe. This, the Earth's ocean is not a bathtub. It varies from place to place, and it can vary quite dramatically from place to place. So if you melt an ice sheet, three things happen. The first thing is you're certainly dumping water into the ocean. But two other things happen that are more subtle um, and require a lot of care in modeling. When an ice sheet melts, that cr crust pops up. We call it rebound. That's the second thing that happens. And the third thing that happens is that the gravitational field of the Earth is changed. Just like the sun and the moon produce a gravitational pull on the ocean, a large ice sheet also exerts a gravitational pull on the ocean. And so when you melt that ice sheet, when you make it less massive, water will actually move away from the ice sheet as far away as it can get. And so those three processes add up to this very complex geometric pattern of sea level. Each ice sheet, each glacier has its own unique geometry or pattern in sea level, and that's why these things have come to be known as sea level fingerprints. The key for us is to try to understand how they're all going to mix together, not only how much the Antarctic or Greenland or Alaska or Patagonia melted over the last few decades, but moving forward, we need to understand how they're going to melt and what this means for this regionally varying sea level rise.